Hi. In the following chapter, we will be discussing language learning contexts. By language learning contexts, we mean the circumstances under which a language is learned. As you know, when a person is learning a new foreign or second language, notice that we are no longer talking about first language acquisition here. There are many factors that play a role. Therefore, we will be discussing when, where, how, and why language is learned. Language learning contexts are divided into two types, naturalistic and instructional. We will see what we mean by each term in the following videos. Note that from now on we will be using several terms throughout the course. The first term is learner, and by learner we mean any person learning a new language, whether it's a child, a teenager, or an adult. The other term is target language, and here it indicates the second or the foreign language that is being studied, no matter what language it is. Here we are differentiating from the first or native language. Finally, we have the term dominant language, and by dominant language, we mean the language that is spoken in the environment, that is the society, where the learner lives. For example, let's say we have an Italian person living in Lebanon, learning English. Here, what is the dominant language? It is Arabic. Even though the target language is English, and the native language of the learner is Italian, dominant language in the environment, the society is Arabic. Let's get started. First of all, what do we mean by naturalistic contexts? Pause this video and think a little bit about um, contexts or circumstances where a language is learned in a natural way. I hope you thought of these two contexts, immigration and study abroad. You all know what we mean by immigration. It is the movement of a person from one country to another, from their homeland to a new country, where they decide to settle and live. Let's begin by thinking about the causes of immigration. What would push a person to move from their home, from their land, to a foreign new country to settle and live there? until the end of their lives or for a long period of time. Normally, as we all know, the main reason could be conflicts, whether personal, social or political, civil wars, like the cases of what's happening nowadays in the Middle East, poverty, to improve one's economic status, that is to find a job, to find better opportunities, to join their family, maybe their parents, maybe a wife joining her husband or a husband joining a wife, and finally personal reasons. Now let's think, what challenges do these immigrants face? How are these challenges related to language learning and language development? Based on this, what are the solutions to these problems? Pause this video and try to think about each of these questions before we proceed with our lesson. Of course, immigrants face many challenges in learning the language of native speakers. To begin with, immigrants might have little or no previous knowledge of the target language. Let's think of another example from our uh, environment here in Lebanon. Um, an adult person might have to immigrate at, let's say, the age of um, 30 something or 40, 50 and 60 sometimes. They travel to, uh, to a country where, um, where they can barely speak or understand the language of the country. And here they face several difficulties in order to interact with native speakers. Let's think a little bit um, about countries that are um, common destinations for immigrants uh, here in, um, in our environment in the Middle East. Other than uh, countries like Canada, United States, Australia, where the dominant language is English, or countries like France, also Canada again, where the dominant language is French, and these two languages, English and French, are taught in Lebanon as second languages. 
um, there are countries like Germany, um, Spain, Italy, Russia, Sweden, the Netherlands, or let's say uh, Brazil, Argentina, etc., whose dominant or native language is uh, neither Arabic, nor French, nor um, English. And from our experiences, we know that these people uh, face a lot of difficulties in acquiring or, or learning the language of the host country. Another thing is that they face this kind of um, identity uh, crisis, as in they have this culture, their heritage, and they're moving to another country with a different language, different culture, and different heritage. And they try to um, keep uh, and maintain their own uh, heritage and the language of their uh, parents, grandparents, and ancestors while learning a new language. And here they have this personal conflict. And for this reason, they might face some lack of personal investment. Um, you might hear them saying something like, um, I'm not going to neglect my own language. Um, I don't have to learn the other language, etc. Third, social interaction between um, immigrants, that is the target language learners, and the native speakers could be hindered, that is um, um, affected negatively by feelings of inferiority or inadequacy. What we mean here is that because they do not speak the language, the dominant language of the host country, they feel unable to communicate with speakers, native speakers of that language. And this makes them feel less powerful, less important, and they might find a hard time fitting in in the society in which they live. And this might happen with teenagers, um, adults, or um, older people. It is not limited to older people only. And this clash of powers limits also the opportunities of immigrants outside normal classrooms in their daily life, in the market, um, let's say in the building where they live with neighbors or at school, um, in the job place, etc. The fourth challenge is related to um, economy, economic challenges. Why would immigrants face financial difficulties? Try here also to pause the video and think about answers to this. What kind of financial problems might an immigrant face? Adult immigrants, when they um, arrive to the host country, need to find a job. And in order to find a job, as you know also from experiences, maybe your own experience or the experience of your relatives here in um, in Lebanon, they need to learn the language of the uh, host country. And if they're not fluent in the language, the target language, they might find difficulty um, getting a good job. And even if they could get a job, it might not uh, match their previous qualifications. That is, they might be, um, they might have um, good experience and so on. However, their previous qualifications are neglected because they lack the language of uh, the dominant um, uh, the environment, the dominant language in the environment. Another problem is that they might find a job, however, um, they might have low salary, um, they assign low number of hours. All of these factors, which are a personal, social, economic at the same time results in what in a, in a feeling of demotivation by the adult immigrant and um, they find little time uh, little motivation to take formal language classes um, maybe because of uh, they cannot pay for classes or maybe they don't have time for classes and this actually what slows down the process of acquiring l2 as I said um, in the beginning of this course, we will be using L2 for the target language, whether it is the second or the foreign language.
Now that we have understood the factors that affect language acquisition or language learning for immigrants, let's look at some suggested practices for solutions. First, what could happen is uh, some classroom-based social research to help immigrants, that is research conducted by certain organizations to help immigrants cope with the challenges of language learning. Another thing is that learners must be encouraged to reflect whenever they speak, um, to native speakers of the target language, they should uh, reflect on their interaction with these speakers. Hence, they would be able to understand the factors. What is affecting their interaction? Is it something personal, social, um, economic, or others? Therefore, it is something that requires some personal effort. For extra reading, please refer to your book and read the case of Mila, um, who is an immigrant, uh, on pages 36, 37, you will see the story written in a gray box on these pages. I will be asking you in the live session about what you read, so please be prepared. Now let's move to studying abroad. What do we mean by studying abroad and who and why does this program happen? Studying abroad programs are programs that happen uh, when a certain student, whether at a school or at a university, decides to learn a certain language and travel um, to another academic institution where they have the ability to interact with native speakers of their target language in order to improve their language development and language acquisition. It might happen um, during for a month or a full semester, a whole academic year or a full study period that is, let's say, um, in cases of a university uh, study, it would be for three or four years. Uh, in the following section, I will be showcasing um, the uh, experience of uh, a young woman whom I personally know, Alea. She gave me permission to share her uh, story and um, her pictures uh, in this section. Alea is an American girl who lives in Washington, D.C. Uh, she decided to learn Arabic in the university, hence she traveled in her senior year in high school, that is grade 12, to Amman in Jordan. And um, there she lived with a Jordanian family and went to a Jordanian school and mixed with Jordanian, that is Arabic uh, speakers of, uh, Arabic speaking uh, students. Uh, what you should keep in mind about studying abroad is that it is not always a successful experience. Several factors play a role. It might be beneficial and it might be um, a pointless when it comes, of course, to language learning. First of all, it requires a lot of personal investment. How much is the learner ready to interact with native speakers, to take courses in the target language, and to go beyond the comfort zone? That is, are they willing to uh, integrate and embrace the culture of the local environment? The more they go out, the more they embrace the culture, they acquire the language better. And most uh, recent researchers on foreign language acquisition show us that culture is an important component of acquiring a new language. Another factor is the student's preparation uh, for the experience using technology, exchanges, um, and the social impact of this linguistic choice of speaking to natives. Therefore, if it is a successful case, there are a lot of benefits. Among them are the increased number of words uttered by the learner, sorry, few pauses and difficulties in speaking, and um, uh, in addition to this, they are able to carry short conversations with students and locals, that is native speakers, and finally an increased uh, but limited ability to understand native speakers when they um, speak to the learner. That is due to the daily interaction. Let's see some pictures from Alayo's experience in studying in Jordan. Um, we see here the interaction with peers, with the students her age, uh, Arabic classroom, etc. And the cultural engagement, uh, whether it's about food, about um, the culture of um, wearing the dress of that culture, interacting with the family, her host family, all of these helped Alea um, 
acquired the Arabic language and made her love the Arabic language. Therefore, um, please read the profile of Steve on page 39 on the book. And uh, of course, I will also be asking you questions about the successful case of Steve and unsuccessful um, uh, case of Julia. Thank you and see you soon.